Hey guys, today we are back in the city of London to take you on a short train ride, 17 minutes to be precise, from London, Victoria to Streatham. Streatham is a district in South London in England, mostly in the London borough of Lambeth. It's centred five miles south of Charing Cross, and the area is identified in the London Plan as one of the 35 major centres in Greater London. I have to say that Streatham always had plenty to appeal. The high road is flanked by some of the nicest Art Deco buildings you'll find in the southwest of London, and the spacious pavements mean that the trendy independent cafes can offer places for people to sit outside. It's also very well connected. As well as um, the three overground stations, many buses can take you anywhere in London you like. Many excellent independent food stores are in Streatham. From Polish delicatessen, to a la butchers, besides a fresh crop of trendy restaurants and bars that are popping up to serve the area's current generation of residents. Streatham was the home of Sir Harry Tate for many years. Also the legendary Naomi Campbell was born in and grew up here. This was just before she made her way onto every catwalk in the world. But this vast swathe of um, southwest London is um, regularly overlooked in favour of neighbouring trendy Balham, Clapham and Brixton. And the very long high road got uh, such a reputation that, um, well, let's say that things have not always been um, like this in the past. However, things have changed and they are still changing so much and um, SW16 is now the place to be. This video aims to tell the rich history of this neighbourhood in suburban London, which made me understand the reasons why those born here or that have been living here for a long time are so proud of it. Streatham means the hamlet on the street. The street in question is the London to Brighton Way, was the Roman road from the capital Londinium to the south coast near Portslade. Today, within Brighton and Hove. It's likely that the destination was a Roman port, now lost to coastal erosion, which has been tentatively identified with Novus Portus, mentioned in Ptolemy's Geographia. The road is confusingly referred to as Stain Street, Stone Street in some sources, and diverges from the main London Chichester Road at Kennington. After the departure of the Romans, the main road through Streatham remained as an important trackway. From the 17th century, it was adopted as the primary coach road to Croydon and East Grinstead, and then on to Newhaven and Lewis. In 1780, it then became the route to the Turnpike Road from London to Brighton and subsequently it became the basis of the modern A23. This road and its traffic have shaped Streatham's development. Streatham's first parish church, St. Leonard's, was funded in Saxon times, but an early Tudor tower is the only remaining structure predating 1831, when the body of the church was rebuilt. The medieval parish covered a more extensive area, including Balham and Tuttingbeck. Streatham appears in Domesday Book of 1086 as Estraham. It was held by Beck Halloween Abbey in Normandy from Richard de Tombridge. Annually, it was assessed to render £4.05 to its overlords. Streatham village remained largely unchanged until the 18th century, 
when the village's natural springs, known as the Streatham Wells, were first celebrated for their health-giving properties. The reputation of the spa and the improved turnpike roads attracted wealthy City of London merchants and others to build their country residences in Streatham. In spite of London's expansion around the village, a limited number of developments took place in the village in the second half of the 19th century. Most notably, on Wellfield Road and Sunny Hill Road. These roads are today considered an important part of what remains of the historic Streatham village, as they found little or no influence from the growth of metropolitan London. Wellfield Road, which had previously been known as uh, Liam Lane, was renamed to reflect its role as the main route from the village centre to one of the well locations. Another mineral well was located on the south side of Streatham Common, in an area that now forms part of the rookery. In the 1730s, Streatham Park, a Georgian country mansion, was built by the brewer Rathrail on land he bought from Lord of the Manor, the fourth Duke of Bedford. Streatham Park later passed to Ralph's son, Henry, who, with his wife Hester, entertained many of the leading literary and artistic characters of the day, most notably the lexicographer Samuel Johnson. The dining room contained 12 portraits of Harry's guests painted by his friend Joshua Reynolds. These pictures were then labelled as the Streatham Worthies. Streatham Park was later leased to Prime Minister Lord Shelburne and was the venue for early negotiations with France that led to the Peace Treaty of 1783. Streatham Park was demolished in 1863. One large house that survives is Park Hill on the north side of Streatham Common, rebuilt in the 19th century for the Leaf family. It was lately the home of Sir Harry Tate, sugar refiner, benefactor of local libraries across South London, including Streatham Library, and the founder of the Tate Gallery at Millbank. Development accelerated after the opening of Streatham Hill Railway Station on the west end of London and Crystal Palace Railway in 1856. The other two railway stations followed within 15 years. Some estates, such as Telford Park to the west of Streatham Hill, were spaciously planned with facilities like tennis clubs. Despite the local connections to the Duke of Bedford, there is no link to the contemporary Bedford Park in West London. Another generously sized development was Ripple Park, the area near Christchurch Road, promoted by the Ripple family. Other streets adopted more conventional suburban layouts. Three more Paris churches were built to serve the growing area, including Emmanuel and St. Andrews in 1854, St. Peter's in 1870, and St. Margaret's the Queen's in 1889. There is now a mixture of buildings from all architectural eras of the past 200 years here in Streatham. So we reached the end of part one. In the next video, we will look at the inner war period when Streatham was a location for entertainment, sports and culture. The Second World War period, its decline and recovery. Thank you so much for now and I look forward to seeing you next time. Ciao.